Hi, great to see you again. I uh, hope you're happy, hope you're doing well. In this lesson, I'm going to run through some things that we have covered, but perhaps in a sketchy way, in some of the previous lessons. And I'm going to do this in four parts, actually. So the next four lessons will all be about WordPress. The reason I'm doing this is I've had some of my students come back to me and they've been a bit confused about things, how to set it up and what the best way to do things is. So I just wanted to run through it just as a bare bones WordPress installation. Okay, not using any of the plugins I've talked about because we can get back to those. But if you want to just use WordPress and why would you want to just use WordPress and not the plugins? Well, you might be strapped for cash and not have the, the, the money to spend on the plugins. So I want to run through how you set up WordPress, how you get it working, and the, the things you customize on it for your site. And that's what we're going to be covering in this lesson. Basically, what is WordPress? It was designed originally as a blogging platform. And then, if you like, a blog is like a diary. It's a diary that's online and people would write diary articles every day just as you would enter them manually in your diary and they called them blogs and that stands for, uh, short for weblog I think it is. So it's a blogging platform and that's what it was originally designed as but it's very versatile and it's also a content management system so it manages your pictures and all your information that's in there and it organizes it in a very good way and you can put it into categories and all sorts of things. So it's a content management system as well. There are lots of them, uh, there are others about, some of them people prefer to WordPress but WordPress is one that I use and it's the only one that I understand and know so it may be, well be that you are very well versed in the use of Joomla or something similar and you may prefer to use that that's fine I don't know anything about them I am technical noggin if you like I, I, I'm not really very good technically I like to stick with what I know and I know enough about uh, WordPress to get by and to be able to teach you how to get by with it as well and the, to get the end result of making money because that's what we're here for right so as I say it's not the only one it may not be the best one for some websites but it's my favorite because one it's free it's open source what does open source mean it means that developers can get at the programming that's in there so because of that it's able to be modified in any way that you want if you have the skills and one of the ways that you can modify it is by using plugins and plugins are things that developers have designed to fit with WordPress that change the way or expand the way that WordPress works for certain functions so it's very handy because of all the plugins there are literally thousands of plugins for WordPress and it's easy to install and it's easy to use and I'll show you how to install it in just one moment. If your web host uses cPanel with a Fantastico add-on, uh, as does the SOAP version, uh, the, the SOAP hosting that I've recommended to you previously, then you can use the one-click WordPress installer. I've got a link here, well, there's a link below the video uh, for, for that. And if you want to install WordPress manually because you're using some hosting that doesn't have a one-click installer some of them don't it's unusual but some of them don't uh, or you may have other reasons that you want to install it manually it's still pretty easy and I'm going to walk you through that as well and if you do need to do that then the WordPress site where you can download the zip file is here and I'm going to show you downloading it and uploading it and getting it working and that's what we're just going to cover in this lesson so I'm going to cut now and go to me doing this live which you probably have a laugh at because I'm a little bit ham-fisted but I get there and then we'll come back here and just go through the action steps and that'll be it for this week or for, for this particular lesson for today's lesson Okay, most of you will be using a hosting company with cPanel, so I'm, so I'm only going to cover cPanel in this illustration. 
I'm going to show you a little bit later on what happens sometimes you get a cPanel or you're, you're using different hosting that does not have the one click install but if you scroll down most cPanels and certainly if you're with SOAP hosting you will get a cPanel that looks like this and here we go soft delicious apps installer you click on WordPress and you click install and it'll just run through um, things. Now, most of the things you won't need to change. What I suggest you do, I think I've run through this before, but what I suggest you do is take out that directory there. Unless you particularly want it, you, you've got your site set up and you want WordPress just in a separate directory, in which case you could leave that in, WP. But if you do that, they won't get to your main site with your main domain name. You so you will need to just take that out, and then when somebody goes to two four seven earning dot com or whatever your your this isn't my domain. This is just one in inside our hosting. Whatever domain you have, they'll go directly to WordPress. You can put in there your site name and the site description, but you can also leave it for now because you can change this, and we're going to be going through that. In, in the coming lessons how to do this from your WP admin so I would suggest you leave that you want to pick a good username don't use admin because WordPress is popular they tend to be a lot of hackers that have a go at getting into WordPress sites uh, something that normally it's not really malicious it's just something that people do for fun I have no reason to understand why but they do and if you leave your username as admin which is the sort of default there then it makes life easier for them so you want you want to put something in if your name's Joe blogs you can put Joe blogs site or something like that and then your password you want to make a good password and in fact if I slide this over you can actually get a password there and you'll need to copy that down because you'll want to keep it put it in a text file or something it's a good idea to have a file for all your websites um, if you have only got one have a file for your one website but if you've got more than one have a different file for each one and just call it whatever your site is called um, and then put all the information in there you can put this in uh, a text file and just add the password in and the username and then you've got it and you won't forget it uh, you don't need to pick themes because that will all be done and you would just click install and it would install that on your site for you very very simple very easy now there is just a chance that you will have um, either a cPanel which doesn't have that WordPress install like this one here okay it doesn't have that uh, one click install loaded into this cPanel most of them do but there's a chance that you might not have if you've got some other hosting company other than SOAP also you may have a different type of control panel uh, there are different ones plesk used to be very popular you don't see it so much now but if you've got a different control panel you may or may not have automatic installation one click installation what you do in a case like that is you're going to install this uh, and it's very very simple and i'm going to show you uh, i've actually got wordpress installed in this site but i'll install it again in a in a folder and you'll see uh, if we go to file manager I'm pretty sure we've got word yeah let me slide this over so that you can see it better or expand you can see these are all WordPress files WP 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 so it is installed on this site I thought I thought it was what if we wanted to install uh, WordPress and we didn't have it installed on this site or we want to put another version of it in a folder for some purpose you might want to have a separate WordPress site in a folder for just running videos or something like that so 
what would you do in a case like that? Well, it's pretty straightforward, so I'm going to show you. What you do is you go to this site, wordpress.org.org, and you download their latest version of WordPress. Save link as... This time, yeah, this time we've got the WordPress zip file. And as I say, I'm going to put this in the OneDrive folder. And that's, that's in there now. And we can go back to our site and we can load that. And I'll show you how. So here we are back in our file manager. And what we can do now is we can upload. And let me slide this over again. And it'll ask you to choose a file. And then if we go to that uh, OneDrive, and we want to choose that file, and we open it, that will, there's a little bar going in, down in the bottom right-hand corner, which you can't see actually, but uh, it's, it's now completed. So I can go back to Home here, and you will see that there will be, there we are, a zip file there. Now if we select that file, and then we go to unpack or something like that, extract, here we go, extract, and we click on extract the file, and that is going to open a folder, and put those files in that folder. The folder is going to be named the same as the zip file was, the zip file was WordPress, so it's open a folder, there we go, WordPress, and all those files are going to be in there, and it's done that. And you can just check that they're there. And there are all those files. So what you do now is you go to the website here. And this is the website. Now this is going to take me to the original WordPress installation. Because we've not put any folder in. Okay, so that's there. But if we now go forward slash, and that was in a folder called WordPress, and that will bring up an installation file. Here we go, setup. It's got the setup in there. And you pick the language. Most of you will want English. And what you need, it tells you. You need a database name, a database username, a database password, database host, and a table prefix. All that sounds a little bit confusing, but it's really pretty simple. Let me show you. Here we are back in our cPanel. What we want to do is we're going to go back to the home page. And then we want to look for databases. Uh, there we go, databases. And we use this wizard, MySQL, or MySQL. We click on the wizard, and we want a new database. And I'm going to call this WP2. Then we go to the next step. You have to com uh, complete a username. We can call this WP2 user. Uh, it doesn't matter what you. And we can use the password generator. Copy the password. And we're going to save that in a text file. And I'll just grab my text file. And I've just pasted that in there. And that's my WordPress database for 333. Dot, I don't know, what, what is it? It's 333.net. WordPress database user. I think we're going to get all this in a, in a minute anyway. Um, can't remember. Uh, we can save this as 333.net. I might already have that actually, but we'll just see. We have uh, 333.net. 333. Net one. So we've got that saved. Okay. Copy. And we use that password. And we click on create user. And we don't want to save that there. And we don't want to save that there. And we want to click on all privileges. 
and then we go to next step and then we can copy this as well and we can paste that in our file and that gives us the name of the database and the name of the sorry the name of the user account for which we've got the password here and the name of the database which we've got here okay we might as well save that again and we're ready to go we've got the information we need for that setup so if we go back to the setup we've got the database name the username the password uh, the host and the table prefix so let's go database name is that and the username is that and the password is I think we've got it all saved here and it, it's handy in case we ever need it sometime in the future when we've forgotten all about this it does happen And this will be the same in 99% of all cases. And then you click Submit. And it says OK. It's checked that and it said, yeah, we've got all that. It's right. And watch this. Run the install. And you want your site title. My blog. You can put in whatever you want. A username. Joe blogs password email you want to put in an email that is generic you don't want to put in the email that is linked to your site just in case you can't access your site at some stage and you need to send your password out so you want to put something in that's that's not linked to the site a gmail account is great I'll put in that one and then you click install WordPress and that's it and there we go you can log in and that's your password and your thing is, is in there you log in and there you are you're in your 333.net forward slash WordPress WP admin if you would just go to WP admin that would be the original site that goes just straight from 333.net so this is one I set up in a subfolder just to show you how easy that is all you've got to do is remember always copy and paste your passwords and save them in a text file like that and you can't go wrong anything else doesn't really matter because you've got the information that you want there okay so that's how you set up WordPress well I hope you found that was pretty straightforward and easy really if you need to do that um, you can always go through the video again pause it where you need to and just see how it all works and then your action steps decide if you're going to use WordPress for your website I really recommend very strongly that you do because that way you'll be able to follow along with what we're doing much easier than, than using some other system and if it is yes then just install it and in the, the next lesson I'm going to show you what to do with WordPress after you install it how you're going to customize it um, for your site and um, exactly what to do and as I say this is in four parts so this is part one part two will be uh, just showing you what to do with it after you install it then we've got parts three and four and at the end of part four I've got a comprehensive I think there's about 20 videos which I'm going to give you access to and these they run through all aspects of using WordPress so that's another reason why it's good to use because if there's something that you get stuck on and you think oh I wonder how I do that or how should I do this it'll be in those videos now those videos were recorded I um, I had them done about probably two maybe three years ago now 
So some of the things that you see in there will have changed in the way that they look within your WordPress back office. But the functions will be still the same. So they're very useful tutorials. As I say, I think I think there's 20 videos and they all cover different aspects of using WordPress. So I'm going to give you that with the lesson four and you'll have access to all those as well as the four basic things that I'm going to go through in the next this lesson and the next three. OK, so that's it. And I'll see you in the next lesson. God bless.